This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. This is part of a series of videos where we're going to be solving more complicated trigonometric equations where we might need to use these methods. Factoring, the quadratic formula or other methods for solving quadratics. We might have to use trig identities. We might have to square both sides. We also might be dealing with multiple angles. Keep in mind that if any time you square both sides of an equation, you, it's essential that you check solutions for extraneous roots. All right, we're going to solve this trig equation in the interval 0 to 360 degrees. Okay, I could change everything to sines and cosines, and in fact, I did solve this trig equation in the previous video doing that, but instead, I'm going to use another strategy here. When I see cosecant of alpha and I see cotangent of alpha, I know there's this relationship. Cotangent squared x plus 1 equals cosecant squared x, so if I had a cosecant squared alpha, I would be able to replace it with cotangent squared x plus 1, for instance. So let's see. I think what I'll do is add square root of 3 to both sides to begin with, and I'll tell you the reason I'm going to do that, because it's usually easier to uh, square something when you have a plus sign instead of a minus sign. So I'm going to do that, but you could do this differently. And now I'm going to square both sides. So on the left side, we've got cosecant squared alpha. And on the right side, remember this is a binomial. It's cotangent of alpha plus square root of 3 times another cotangent of alpha plus square root of 3 using the formula. That's the first term squared plus 2 times cotangent alpha times square root of 3. So that's 2 square root of 3 cotangent alpha plus the last term squared. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. So on the right side, I've got everything in terms of cotangent, but not on the left side. So I'm going to use this formula that the cosecant squared x is cotangent squared x plus 1. So let's write this as cotangent squared alpha plus 1. And then we just copy the right-hand side of the equation. And hopefully you recognize this as a quadratic, but instead of x, I've got cotangent of alpha. So we're going to get the um, everything on one side of the equation. And in this case, actually, notice there's a cotangent squared alpha on each side. So if you subtract a cotangent squared alpha from both sides, you actually are only going to have a cotangent alpha in your problem. So let's see. How about I subtract a cotangent squared alpha from both sides and a subtract 3 from both sides. So on the left side, I've got negative 2, and on the right side, I've got only 2 squared to 3 cotangent of alpha. And now I could divide both sides by 2 squared to 3, the coefficient. And notice the 2's cancel, I'll still have a negative 1. So where your algebra has to be really good when you're solving these equations. So basically I've got that the cotangent is negative 1 over square root of 3. I like to think in terms of the tangent, so I'm just taking the reciprocal of both sides. So negative square root of 3 equals the tangent of alpha. That's equivalent to saying the cotangent is negative 1 over square root of 3. So where is the tangent? equal to negative square root of 3 in 0 to 360. So let's look at the picture. Where is it negative? Well, it's going to be in quadrant 2 and 4. And if we think of this as negative root 3 over 1, for instance, that's the y over the x, that would give me something in quadrant um, 4, right? If the x is 1 and the y is negative square root of 3, you would have this angle right here, which is, let's see, 360 minus uh, 300, 
I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, 360 minus 60 would be um, 300 uh, degrees. So that's one possibility. And the other one would be up here, right, where that's negative 1 and that's positive square root of 3, which is at 120 degrees. So I have that alpha could either be 120 degrees or 300 degrees. Now they should be 180 degrees apart from each other, right, because the tangent has the period of 180 degrees. But now we've got to make sure that we check each of these solutions in the original equation before you squared it because you, can, you might have an extraneous root. So let's do that next. So let's check each of these solutions. So I've got the cosecant of 120 degrees minus square root of 3. So let's see. Here's 120 degrees. Let's see, negative 1, square root of 3, 2. And the cosecant is the r over the y. So it would be the 2 over square root of 3. minus square root of 3. Hmm. So if I want a common denominator of square root of 3, notice you can multiply this by square root of 3 over square root of 3, which will just give me in the numerator minus 3 over square root of 3. Now instead you could have got a common denominator of 3, right? You could have rationalized this. But in any case, this gives me negative 1 over square root of 3, which I know you could simplify that, but let's just see what happens on the right hand side. We want the cotangent of 120 degrees. All right, cotangent is the x over the y, so it's negative 1 over square root of 3. So I can see they are the same, all right, whether you'd simplify both sides or not. Okay, now let's do the other, other solution, 300 degrees. So we're going to put in cosecant of 300 degrees minus square root of 3. So let's see, if we're looking at the 300 degrees, we're looking about here, 1 negative square root of 3, 2 is the way I think of it. And so what's the cosecant? That'll be the r over the y, so that's 2 over negative square root of 3, or negative 2 over square root of 3. And I'm going to do the same little trick here. I'm just going to multiply this by square root of 3 over square root of 3 to get a common denominator of square root of 3. So that's minus 3 over root 3. And that gives me negative 5 over root 3. Okay, let's see what happens on the right. What's the cotangent of alpha? And, I'm sorry, in this case we're doing the cotangent of 300 degrees. The cotangent is x over y, 1 over negative square root of 3. Um, and that is definitely not the same thing, so this is not a solution. So only 120 is a solution. 120 degrees. Depending on how you solve this equation, and there's probably three or four other ways that I kind of no noticed I might have done this, you might get different extraneous roots that, you know, do not check. So what's important is, that you check all of the possible solutions and only the ones that give, you know, the check are, are in the final answer. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.